So are you able to see this the screen with the prayer? Great, thank you. So this prayer um, that I shared today is um, from the USCCB website. They have been doing quite a bit of um, revision to the website, the, the USCCB. And so there's a lot of fresh new content um, and laid out in a very appealing way. <laughs> so if you haven't had an opportunity to go to the USCCB.org website, they do have some beautiful Advent resources. And so today um, we'll pray this Lexio Divina for Advent. And we'll do the first week of Advent. And so I'll start with lighting my Advent candle here. I brought one candle with me. My wreath is kind of rather large. <laughs> to be, uh... Okay, so I think everyone is familiar with um, the Lexio Divina process. So we'll um, we have the reading, the Lexio, and then we'll have meditation, uh, prayer, and contemplation, and then we will um, end with our closing prayer. Okay, so we gather our thoughts. We gather our spirit as we begin this prayer, as we begin all things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Keep us alert, we pray, O Lord, our God, as we await the advent of Christ, your Son, so that when he comes and knocks, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our reading is taken from the gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a, a man traveling abroad he leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, we do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all. Watch. <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all. Watch. So let's take some time <clears throat> to reflect in silence on one or more of the following questions. What word or words in this passage caught your attention? What in this passage comforted you? What in this passage challenged you?
Let me open up our microphones here. <clears throat> if there's um, anything anyone would like to share. Uh, good evening, everyone. Let me share uh, the word that touches me this uh, evening. Uh, it's watch, the word watch. And as I uh, continue to reflect on it and listen to it, actually, as I continue to listen to it, uh, what, uh, what inspires me is that there is hope because it's, uh, I keep watch because someone is coming. So I'm hoping. There's something good, it's like uh, in the song that was made out of the, from the, inspired by the song of the blind man by Trimaeus, something good is going to happen to you today. <laughs> yes, because Jesus is passing by. So uh, that someone comforts me uh, with our situation now. There is hope, yeah? so watch. But the challenge is, to stay awake, <laughs> to be faithful in watching, in the, uh, so that I may be able to recognize when he passes, yeah, and uh, just uh, so that I may have a glimpse of his uh, what I'm hoping for. So it's the faithfulness, it's staying awake, it's uh, you know, it's staying there. That's the challenge. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I think I, I like what Sister said, and I agree. I I think I'm awake. I'm watchful. That what I'm my my uh, challenge is today in this reading is um, own work, his own work. Uh, what is that right now? Um, it's changed over the last couple of, well, several months, and it's morphed a lot and it hasn't stopped. Um, oh yeah, that's what I'm struggling with for my challenge. Thank you. I also um, <clears throat> was uh, taken in by the passage of that uh, each with his own work, um, that our mission has been given to us by Christ. And I have to remember that. Is this me who wants this or is or am I listening to Christ? Um, and I think in many ways we feel we, we can feel when it's when we really are more attuned to God's to, to, to what God has handed to over to us. Um, it resonates more. Things tend to work out more better, better. <laughs> um, resources tend to come our way. It's 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 almost miraculous. Um, and to to remember that it is it is Christ's mission. Um, and, and not my own. So to, to be humble and to always be watchful. So let us read the scripture passage one more time. And 
will bring to the Lord the praise, the petition, or thanksgiving that the word inspires in you. Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. So what conversion of mind heart and life is the Lord asking of us. So let's spend some time with these questions in silence. <clears throat> And let us pray together the closing prayer. O shepherd of Israel, hearken from your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth. Rouse your power and come to save us. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine 
and protect what your right hand has planted. The Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. May your help be with the man of your right hand, <clears throat> with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. And the living word for this week is, how can I make my life a gift for others in charity? So as we continue with our week, let's carefully examine our schedule <clears throat> and judge whether it accurately reflects the priority that our faith should have in our lives. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Ah. Well, again, welcome, everyone. It's so good to see you. Let me take my uh, screen share off. Okay. You know, I apologize. GoToMeeting to me is not as user friendly. Did my did my screen share disappear for you? No, it's still there. Yeah, let's see. Okay. I think now it should be gone. Yeah, okay. And I um <clears throat> could, let's see. I'm now I'm see could 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 you all say your names? I seem to have lost my audio with you. Miss Karen. Oh, there you go. Okay, great. Thank Carol. you. Great. Hi Jane. I'm Sister Mercy. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very I much. I am Shirley. Thank you for your prayers. And so I know we're all familiar with each other, but let's just go ahead. It's a small group tonight. I love it. Let's let's just go around again and just, you know, our name and our parish um, reintroduce ourselves to each other. Um, let's see. I'll I'll go according to the list that I have here. Bob, you want to start? Hi, Jane. Hi, everybody. Happy Advent to everyone. Thank you, Jane, for the prayer. That was beautiful. Um, I, I'm Bob Noguchi, St. Anne in Kanyoi. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Carol. Hi, I'm Carol Mackay. I'm from um, Kula Catholic Community up here in Kula in Maui. How, is it cold? Is it freezing up there? It is cold. <laughs> <laughs> I have on my Uggs. Oh! <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Thank you and welcome. Hi, Karen. Hi, Jane. Hi, everybody. I'm Karen Powers, and I'm at St. Teresa in Kihei, where it is not cold and I'm not wearing Uggs. <laughs> <laughs> but it's dry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hi, Shirley. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Shirley Caban from Our Lady of Sorrows in Waihawa. Um, we're expecting 59 degrees tomorrow morning. That's the word we got in Waihawa. Ooh, nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're so funny. <laughs> Hi, Sister Mercy. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sister Mercy. I'm the Cathedral of St. Teresa. <clears throat> Well, then welcome. I think, did I miss anyone? Okay, we're all right. Well, again, welcome. Um, thank you. We just came off, as you know, a, a wonderful three-part series with Father Philip Denier on the new directory for catechesis. Um, for, you know, we've known 
Philip, for those of you who have lived in Hawaii, Philip sort of like is is our local boy made good. He, you know, I I, rem I taught his um his younger sister when she was in eighth grade, and I just remember Philip hanging around and just like, oh, who is this kid? And he is um, just tremendous. So if you haven't had a chance to um, view the videos, they are um, uploaded to my website along with his slide deck. Um, feel free to share it with anyone you wish. Um, I'm also trying to promote it through all of the clergy because it's important that they uh, get caught up with the, the changes to the directory. Um, and all ministries, uh, really, every person um, would benefit from knowing what Pope Francis um, is, is asking of us, uh, all the baptized in terms of catechesis. So thank you for those who were able to join us and for those who um, uh, viewed the, the videos later. Um, thank you also for those of you who were able to join us at the Hope Heal Renew virtual conference. It was wildly successful with almost like 1,500 people um, on this online conference. Um, and it was fun working with seven other dioceses, California and Nevada, um, because they bring resources and energy that we are hard pressed to do alone here in Hawaii. So um, <clears throat> we will we are going to continue the partnership. As soon as we can meet in person, the Faith Formation Conferences will continue in person. Um, once we can all gather, uh, but we have committed to do something online, this multiple diocese um, thing. Um, our next goal, our goal is to, to do a collaborative um, retreat for, for Lent. So, you know, look for that. And I think that um, you'll really enjoy it. So how's everything going, everyone? Your sacrament preparation, your your programs, can you share um, how things are going? Um, we'll just go in any order, whoever's ready to, to speak on this. I can go ahead. Uh, our program's very small. We're actually only doing the uh, we have a family that needs to go through the um, RICA program. There's a teenager who's baptized, but he didn't do anything else. And there's two younger kids that we are aiming to baptize. So we've been working through that program with them. I'm doing the teenager, so I've done with the teens. And uh, we're slowly doing them on Sundays. We only get them every other Sunday because it's a split household. So uh, we are processing <laughs> and kind of going through the uh, going through the program kind of picking and choosing what we need to get now until um, Easter time and then uh, the youth group is still meeting about once every other week and it's a zoom meeting but we were able to get them together for uh, the lighting of the graves to help clean out the cemetery and do that project for the church so that was really nice and then we're hoping to get some of the families in to paint the windows of our hall for the holidays. So small projects. Normally we do like we do a big Costco run at this time of year with all the teens, but uh, <laughs> that had to be postponed. So slowly figuring out how we keep them incorporated and interested. But it is very small. It's a, it's a, three kids that we actually have coming in person. Mm hmm. Thank you. I'll go. So we have um, for the teen, the high school kids, uh, we've just been doing um, virtual, but last weekend, last Sunday, um, typically the, the Sunday before, um, Advent, we get together and we clean or we decorate these bricks that Father Terry likes to have made into these sculptural things on the altar for, um, or in the, in the, on the steps, if you guys have been there on the steps going up for the Advent wreath, it's kind of separated, but this year it was a little different. 
um, there is a little bit of miscommunication amongst the staff. And so the teens were there, but we didn't, we put the ribbon around these, to put ribbon around all these bricks and then tape them. And um, of course I sent out a RSVP because I was going to have, you know, non-touch food or, you know, food that only one person would touch, blah, blah, blah. Um, and one of the moms wanted to bring hot cocoa and things like that. And nine responded out of 20 something. And I thought, well, that's not bad because that's about, you know, what usually responds. And I know that some parents are still really having issues with their kids coming in to in person and everything. So a few more than nine responded, um, came, uh, 18 showed up. <laughs> so I was not prepared for 18. Uh, but it was fantastic nonetheless. They they did have um, a good time and we spent more time outside than than doing anything else. They what usually takes us an hour and a half to do these ribbons and then setting the bricks. We didn't have to set the bricks. The bricks were already out to put on the tables to wrap, which was time consuming too. Um, so we were done in 20 minutes. So we ate, they visited, and then we played games just to get to know you games or get to re know you games because. We had a lot of kids move up from eighth grade uh, from this past year. So a lot of new faces. Nice. That was fun. We're still just meeting virtually with everything else. We just got started with sacrament prep in person. I'm doing that in person. Mm -hmm. Well, knowing Father Terry and you all out there, St. Teresa, I'm sure it looks beautiful. <laughs> it does. It looks fantastic. Somebody else <laughs> completed the project. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So religious education is, are, are you meeting in person or are you doing this all online? Online, virtual, online, all Sunday mornings. Morning. And then uh, the high school, um, they're still meeting virtually. <clears throat> but after the good showing, I think if I entice them with a project and some fun and then put a little lesson in there, just kind of hide it in, um, maybe we can meet a couple times starting in January, see how the parents mm -hmm. feel about that. And I think I have a very small sixth through eighth grade group this year. Um, and I'm wondering, I'm wondering if meeting in person starting in January a couple times um, during the month will help that too. Mm. Nice. Mixed feelings with the little guys. We have a better attendance per like percentages. It's mm. much easier to roll out of bed and log on than it is uh, to get in the car and be driven at eight o'clock in the morning, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Karen. Thanks. Uh, I think I'll, I'll share next. Um, I, I, because I think um, Karen, um, I think we're very similar in what's happening. We're still on, on Zoom. We're doing a Sunday Zoom at 10 o'clock. So it's the same as the last time that uh, we spoke. Um, we're also thinking about going back in January. Um, just like Karen mentioned, uh, and Karen, I believe you were on, uh, we have FLOM as well. Um, and I think the unit two ends on January 10th. So we, you know, we sent those things home and we figured, oh, we'll let this unit, um, you know, finish off. And then let's see what happens after January 10th. Let's see if we can do the next uh, unit three on, you know, in person or maybe a hybrid, you know, half, you know, whatever. But um, I also, like Karen mentioned, I, I noticed that there's a high, higher attendance rate. Um, like the percentages of the, the, the kids who are signed up, the, that, that's, that kind of went up and we've been going up. Usually we kind of, there's a natural attrition as we get towards the, you know, the December, but we, we've actually, our numbers have grown. Once we completed registration, you know, our, our, our attendance numbers have, have gone up. So wow. it was kind of a surprise. So I, I don't know. I, I think like what you said, Karen, about maybe it's easier to just roll out of bed and go to school. Um, it's like, you know, it might be, that might be something that, that's helping. So, um, we have uh, 56 kids who are, are, are signed up on, for the Sunday program um, at, at 10 o'clock. And then we have 25 high schoolers who meet uh, in the evening on Sundays uh, every other week. So the, 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 the little ones come, or kinder through, uh, we have no pre-K uh, this year signed up, but K 
kinder through high school sacrament prep, um, they meet at 10 o'clock each, every Sunday. And then the high schoolers meet every other Sunday. So, but it's been, it's been, the, the Zooms have been very good. And um, I, 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 the attendance has been really good. You know, just like Karen said, um, that there's something about it, you know, which, which is kind of a, a plus in this situation. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow, that's very interesting. I'm glad that yeah, you I, that you still have that same uh, um, response too, because our numbers have gone up. I mean, we're still way low than we should be uh, in overall registrations. Um, it, but the we even have kids that have signed on from the mainland because they're over there for whatever. Uh, and then we've also had kids in the parking lot because it's it's in between mass times and we didn't spread our mass times out enough. We just, we kept them scrunched for all the sanitizing and whatnot. And there's, I'm like, are you in a car? <laughs> Where are you? We're at church. I'm like, it's great. <laughs> so yeah, I know part of me is afraid. It's like, maybe we should keep a hybrid and see what <laughs> happens, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm an advocate of that. Mm -hmm. I think too, they don't have any other distractions. Like there's no sports going on. So there's no baseball practices or games or soccer. They're, they're fair game now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Although the hybrid model does allow us to think think in terms of, you know, once all of the weekend activities begin again, um, that using an online, you know, a hybrid model, um, we could switch it to a different time, date, you know, time or, or you know, or such, or, or do the hybrid piece because the, the, the kids can be pretty much anywhere and still log on, um, even if it's on the, the Sundays. So, yeah, I think that there's God, God, God's hand is definitely in all of this. <laughs> yeah, for the churches, I good, sorry, sorry. Say for the churches, I have good internet, and my school doesn't have it, but you could easily do your Zoom and live at the same time if somebody could help you set it up right. Mm hmm Definitely. Sister Mercy? Yeah. Hi, good evening. We uh, started our classes uh, last October and, uh, and mostly are in person. Our only grades three and four who are preparing for their sacraments uh, are online, one group. And plus the two other high school who opted because uh, our high schoolers are in, with us now in person, but two of them opted to go online or to go uh, yeah online. And so uh, Roxanne has uh, another has to to orient parents how to do it, how to guide them, and give them the materials. And I uh, I think they agreed to to meet in person once a week. Oh, once a month, sorry, <laughs> once a month. At least they can have uh, in-person classes. So, uh, so far uh, the the kids are getting used to our routine, checking in, and then they stay in their bubbles. They know already where to go and wait for the catechist and uh, grab their their uh, uh, what is it, wipes because we prepared the sanitized uh, towels for them to wipe their classroom and so on and so forth. And uh, they're getting used to it. Um, and uh, we are just happy that parents also are cooperating with our with, with our present situation. So um, uh, last Thanksgiving, uh, we participated in our church activities by uh, hanging their what they are thankful for, because Father uh, suggested to have banners around and what they are thankful for. So the RE, those who are present in person, uh, made their own uh, mm -hmm. thank yous. And then um, we had also last Sunday, we had right, right of acceptance. Uh, there were seven children preparing for their baptism plus one adult. 
uh, who had their right of acceptance last Sunday. And there were still two more children because uh, they missed some of their classes, so they were not able to join, to join the first batch. And one more adult, uh, so there will be three more uh, uh, who will have their um, right of acceptance at a later date. So most likely, it's a 10 of them in all. And wow. then uh, we already sponsor our mass last Sunday too. <laughs> and we have some of our high school RA kids who our high school students, teens, who already read at the Mass. And we are there and they, uh, they offer a gesture song um, after the, before the final blessing. Thank you, Lord. So, and that is one way for, for us to, to, let, uh, to let those who do not know yet, because we are on live stream, yeah, that we are mm -hmm. starting already and that uh, Ari is back and they can go back to because uh, some really uh, even if we have live stream we have already our website and we have masses but still I, be, I be, there are still some you know uh, who does not know what's going on in our parish so uh, we have that and uh, for our prep because uh, for our preparation for the first confession so our we have the we have different levels we have different schedule at this time we don't have just the say just like last year okay everybody will do it same time no so because uh, some are delayed some are you know the pace so uh in this advent only the second graders and the high schools will have their first reconciliation but our third grade and fourth and the middle schoolers will do it uh in january because i allow the yeah. catechists to feel if they are ready so on then Happily, this our second graders have been with us. All of them have been with us last year as first grade. So uh, the second grade mm. teacher, more or less, you know, is ready. He was able to start right away his lesson because they have been, you know, with us last year. So happily, all of them, and uh, and so with our high school because some of them uh, are all are only for confirmation. <laughs> And some of them, uh, a few for First Commune. So uh, Roxanne was able to prepare them and they will be doing it uh, on the third, before we have our vacation actually. So <laughs> our retreat this time, our retreat this time is no longer family retreats. <laughs> they were just because I have, I have, I think I'm in second grade. I do not know if it's eight, nine, I think. Uh, so they will just do it with their catechists uh, here in our and in our facility, one of our facilities, and no parents at this time. But uh, the catechists will uh, prepare something for the parents that they oh, can good. do, even if they are not present. Because uh, as much as we want, you know, because it was really a nice experience last time that uh, parents are with us. You know, the family cat the family retreat is was really a nice, a wonderful experience. So. Mm -hmm. They have their own schedule, only by themselves, <laughs> with the catechists, and hopefully, um, we will be able to to really, you know, enter into their retreat in spite of these uh, limitations that we are experiencing. And uh, while children are in their classes, uh, Sister Marcy too has uh, her own parent catechesis. So for parents who are staying in the area, she gathers them in the library. And they have the what you did, just like what you did, Jane, uh, earlier, the lecture divina type thing, uh, type of uh, catechesis. But she has she has also lesson in between. And that, um, and I think uh, uh, as of now, we are, I think, 62, because there's still children uh, who wow. registered last week. I do not know how many uh, LOFA is making a final list now, but uh, we are 62 in all. Uh, by the way, our kindergarten, uh, our preschool started to come in last Sunday. Uh, and uh, with, But our first grader was with us already earlier than that. So even in our entrance, the, our entrance first day of class is not the same. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, I know, I know 62 is but a fraction of what uh, you ordinarily, you, who you would ordinarily minister to, but still, that that's a lot of children, you know, considering mm -hmm. um, we're in the middle of a pandemic. So thank you so much. You know, and it's as much work for 300 kids as it is for 62, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> not even one half. Yeah, not even one half. Yeah, <laughs> two thirds. May I don't know. No, I don't know. Forty percent oh, of last year. Yes. Thank you, sister. Hi, Shirley. Did you want to share something? Is he there? Um, I, I just wanted to, a couple of things. Uh, Sister Gina over at Immaculate Conception on Kauai uh, has just been sending me these photos and these updates of everything that's been going on at the parish. So kind of similar, it's the largest, uh, Immaculate Conception is the largest parish um, on Kauai. Now, you know, she's built up the program. So they're at about 50, and and like you, some of you have been saying the numbers are going up. So there are like 50, 60% um, of enrollment, which is really, really great. Um, they they still managed to do um, a, a focus for the family, uh, October, the month of the rosary, and um, having, instead of families going to each other's houses to pray the rosary, which is what they've been doing the last few months, a uh, few years, um, just asking each family to sponsor a rosary so that the family would pray together and then have, um, you know, share that you know, over social media, share that in different ways. One of the families actually um, gathered the family around for a Zoom session and invited, you know, other families to join. So it's really nice um, that, the, that, the, that the families are being taught to pray. She was saying that um, the reluctance is because the, the reluctance is because parents will admit to her that they just don't know how to pray the rosary. And she just has a wonderful, you know, as you all do, a, a wonderful attitude about this and saying, oh, I'm so happy. Whenever I hear this, I'm so happy because now I can teach you. And then, you know, they're, they're just, you know, it, it's just really amazing what's going on there. Um, the, the other interesting um, program going on is over at St. Jude. I think that um, I've shared that or Bonnie has shared what she's doing over there. And um, they've given me credentials to, to peek into their online program there because they use our Sunday, our, our, our Sun, no, not our Sunday visitor. Um, Oh, is that our Sunday visitor? Our Sunday visitor, yeah. And so they're using the online version. Um, uh, they're all they're totally online and using Flipgrid. And it so so, so the it's real it's video based. So you have the lessons that are there, um, but the response from the the children and the parents um, are in like short 20, 30 second videos. And um, a couple of them have just been so amazing because there was this one where the little girl, they, um, it was sec first, first grade, second grade, just, you know, learning, you know, how to go through their prayers. And so here's this little girl sitting on her dad's lap and her dad is leading the prayer and her face is just beaming, just beaming. And it's that positive association you have sitting on the lap of the parent that you love and then that parent leading you in prayer and and it's, and it's the dad <laughs> i'm like i don't cry easily but here i am like oh, oh, oh my god so beautiful uh, so so some really neat things are happening parents are um using the videos to say oh when my when my daughter or my son was studying this this is what i learned from it and just, you know, a little bit at a time, giving parents the confidence <clears throat> to speak the faith. So even if we're not using something like Flipgrid, it would translate well to this, um, <clears throat> to these young adult parents who, you know, it, that's what they naturally do. Like Instagram, you just post a video, you know, of yourself. So, so that, you know, again, in, I, as I think about things that we can, uh, continue to use even post pandemic. Um, it would be fun to have a, a season, a month or whatever. Um, maybe all of the kids who are preparing to receive the sacraments, um, post a video of you and your family praying and have your parent share. What does it mean for you to be confirmed? What does that mean for you, you know, as a parent and such? And, and, and just help them um, 
reclaim um, their role and gain more confidence in it. So, so I just want to thank all of you um, for what you're doing. Oh, I'm sorry, there is one more. St. Michael, uh, Kailua Kona, they're, they're using um, Flam Gospel Weeklies, but they're continuing to do a drive-through. So um, every other week, they have the pickup party. <laughs> and so they prepare the Flam packets and then they've managed to map out their parking lot. If you've been to St. Michael, um, Kailua Kona, it's a rather large parking lot. So, so they set up a, a drive-through where it's three stations. They, they, um, there's a prayer station. So you stop there and the, the family prays together. There's, you know, you pray with the catechist. Um, and then there's a, a drop-off for canned goods, you know, like the food drive or, or some kind of um, outreach project. Um, and then the final one is to pick up the packets you know, and, and such. So they've, so they've managed to, to map that out and their numbers are rising as well. So lots of creativity. You are all just so creative um, and really we're, we're just so blessed by your presence. Um, so is there anything else that you wanted to share that uh, was going on in your parishes? Uh, Jane, I, I just wanted to um, uh, just thank you for a, a resource that you sent months ago um, that we've been using and, and at all levels. But it was, the you know, the Catholic Kids Media, the, and I'm sure you, you probably are all familiar with it, but Catholic Kids Media has the, okay. you know, the, the kids, the, 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 the little cartoon videos of yes. the Sunday um, readings. It, it's, it's really awesome and it's fast, it's, it's short. I, they've managed to make those videos, all, all the readings of the Sunday gospel, including the responsorial Psalm and, and even the gospel acclamation. I mean, just they, they managed to squeeze that into a short time so it's not boring. Wonderful cartoons. And then to add a little homily or reflection afterwards, if you're using something like flom, it, it's like it's like a perfect complement, you know, ah. to do like a lectionary-based curriculum. But the thing is, like, even adults enjoy that video. I mean, I love it, and I I show <laughs> it to my family. We do a family rosary and on Zoom with my Kauai family, and they're every Saturday they ask me, Bob, do you have the that cartoon <laughs> for the Sunday? I need the adult. <laughs> well, I show it on Zoom. So, but I just wanted to say, Jane, you, you turned, you know, you kind of uh, uh, gave us that resource idea months ago, and and it's really awesome. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you for. Oh, oh, thanks. I'm so glad. I did, it, that, that amazes me that that uh, resource, because I don't know how they're churning out all of these great high quality videos and a little bit of exegesis, you know, done so well, and they're like clockwork you can always rely on it being posted in a timely manner it's quite impressive <laughs> and the, the, refle the reflections are you know the reflections are are not kiddie reflections they're 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 interest they're, they, they can interest the kids but they're they're quality reflections too mm -hmm. for every everybody so amazing yeah. amazing i don't know you know amazing resource Great, thank you. Um, if you're unfamiliar with what uh, Bob and I are talking about, it's that Catholic Kids Media uh, resource. Uh, so you can just catholickidsmedia.com, which is really great. So thank you. So you know, uh, along that line, um, on my agenda, I I had asked, uh, made the bullet point of gathering our lost sheep because you're already sort of so ahead of the game here. Um, with the with the vaccine thanks be to god you know coming up and so hopefully we pray by summer you know certainly by the time school year rolls around we're, we're you know we're we're fully back but hopefully we're fully able to come back to mass by his spring wouldn't it be wonderful for easter oh let's keep let's keep praying for this uh, emerge from the tomb. <clears throat> so if there's anything that, um, you know, you, you've come across or you think, gosh, 
how do we how do we go how do we find our lost sheep and i'm asking you this question but no, fully knowing that this is not just your our responsibility you know in faith formation ministry it's the entire parish it, it all the baptized are called to invite someone else back <laughs> you know so i i just kind of wonder because every time i go to mass i look around and you know typically you see the same people were thinned out the crowds are thinned out more but it's pretty much the same people who come and i and i just wonder if each one of us who has been attending mass regularly could could reach out you know to someone who hasn't been um, it's it's a little tricky because catholics we tend to not know i mean we see them like oh yeah you're the eight o'clock mass oh you're the 10 o'clock but <laughs> we don't necessarily know people's names um that's an area that i think we can we can improve but how you know how can we start reaching out uh to to start preparing people to come back to the banquet um and, and that's where i was saying you know, do we need some a real like dynamic uh, that this is the, remember the mass this is the mass you know or do we something that's more basic or it's or we start activating more re highly relational small christian communities to say you know come pray with us um and and then you know let's go to mass together uh, so I, I i'm just you know i don't know the the answer to this i'm looking for you know some sensible ways of going about this but if you know if if you come up if you hear anything see anything or there's a specific need you know what jane do you think that your office could da 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 you know please let me know and you know i'll, I'll do my best to to try to hook you into the process so that we can do it together <laughs> I mean, just just like sort of like a, on the, off the top of our heads for the for the families who have been missing, what what would be a way? I mean, who not missing really? Who who have not who who have not been able to or have chosen not to? You know, come to mass. What what's kind of like, like a brainstorm idea that could work in terms of starting to reach out? like a party. <laughs> I know one thing that we've done and it's um, just keeps us relevant, I guess, more so than, you know, that we're still in their mind. Hopefully people are streaming the masses, but um, like we did a lunch handout so people could come to church and get like a chili plate lunch. You know, just so that they're coming through, they're driving through, they're staying connected. So mm -hmm. we've done two like lunch pickup drives that hopefully keeps other people connected. And even if they're not coming, keeps them thinking they should be streaming. And ah, yeah, here That's because they have idea. a streaming option. And for some people, you know, I mean, maybe it's just too risky. You have a lot of multi generational households and and stuff like that and our churches are small up here mm -hmm. so it's not a lot of space to fit everybody but when you do a community event um that one's a food drive and we're even trying to do like some fundraising type activities that might get people to come by at least for that part mm -hmm. and like you said hopefully we'll be able to open up and people have more of a comfort level with coming closer to the spring Holidays are good too. Holidays bring people in. Like we still have the angel tree, which is toys for kids. Um, the Thanksgiving basket, we were actually, more people donated to that than usual. We had so much more money for our Thanksgiving food drive this year. Well, they ended up buying a bunch wow. of gift certificates at Foodland and taking them to um, Maui Economic Opportunity. Uh -huh. Who had mentioned to us, they have, they've had to turn people away. They're so busy. So. Wow. Wow. I think just when it's community stuff, even if people maybe aren't attending regularly, they're at least showing up and keeping us in their brains and mm -hmm. hopefully streaming. It is a 7 a.m. stream, so that's why I'm always like, okay, hope they're getting up. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Thank you. That's, that's, a, that's a very good idea. And we did have a lot of tourists starting to show up now too for mass, which is hard because we have to book our time we're coming. So we may or may not always have room and they just show up. Mm -hmm. So we're managing that back into our system too. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's right. Thank you. Um, Jane, I don't know if this would apply to, you know, for every parish, if this would fit for every parish, but, you know, Father Rich has been, our, our pastor is Father Rich McNally. He's been big on um, uh, trying to draw the men into ministry and back into ministry. And this is even before COVID. Um, we have one, the, the women always show up, the women that the, mm -hmm. for cantors and lecturers and, you know, help, you know, uh, all the ministries. But he really wants the men to kind of to, to show up too. And we have good men, but but he wants more because you know they're they're outnumbered. Um and and so um in January we're we're doing I, I think I mentioned to you that the Knights of Columbus have that series called Into the Breach. Um mm -hmm. and it's a it's a men's it's a, like a like a like a program for men. And it um it's we're we're gonna do starting in late late January and, and all of February, we're gonna do I think it's six uh, nights every Tuesday. Um, men's nights uh, into the breach. So ah. ne starting next weekend, we're going to start advertising um, to the men to and, and to the women to tell hey if you're if you're if your husband's at home and not coming to man, you know tell them to come to this thing. <laughs> so I guess the idea is to, to to draw the men in and see how that would yeah. work and and see if that brings the family in or or whatever. But um that mm -hmm. that's an idea. But into the breach is sponsored by the Knights of Columbus, and I think I mentioned to you, I, I was so impressed with the program when I watched it. I became a knight. Like I went up, I went up to our our our, our knights council. I said, I, I gotta be a part of this because it was so wow. impressive. I, when I watched the video series. I said, I have to, I have to be a part of this. So um, I, I think it it was re it's a it's a great program. So we're gonna try to roll that out. I think Dallas um, Carter hmm. is going to be doing it on a on more a bigger scale through the Knights of Columbus, uh, and I'm not sure if if it's for just nights or if it's open, but ours is definitely open to, you know, to every, all, all the men in, in the parish. So that's kind of like an angle and hopefully that will start yeah. to stir some stuff. I don't know, just, just an idea. I love that. That is so, so true. You know, and, and statistically, I mean, I was reading some Pew research that, that the children will be, are, are higher, more likely to continue with their faith if the father, if the dad is um, practicing <clears throat> faith. So thank yeah. you, Bob, absolutely. And you know, Bob, Bob and I, uh -huh. sorry, go ahead. Um, so I put out into the breach a month or two ago. Um, I'm from the Diocese of Phoenix. And so uh, that's where the uh it, the idea came from was bishop um olmstead and yep. i know a couple of the guys in the videos um and so i put it out to our parish um i father once father terry wanted to have some kind of men's group because the knights of columbus has has you know is not existent at our parish anymore and so to get men to do anything it's like pulling teeth and um so it's been a year now they've been trying to get a man to start a man's group and or a men's group and he finally just said you're just going to have to do this so i put it out there i'm gonna start with into the breach because i think it's awesome uh when the when bishop almstead wrote that you know so many years ago i forwarded it to my husband and my two uh adult sons they were much younger back then and um then they came out with this fantastic video series and they're short and to the point and the program is really neat and I put it out there and I got one guy to show up he's like 85 <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna try again and after listening to you I'm just gonna you know I don't know I'm just gonna I'm gonna try again in this in uh, January but because God I agree, bless. I think it's awesome that we have to get men involved. God bless you for trying, Karen, you know, and I, we, we might have that one 85 year old guy show up at ours too. And that might be our only, maybe he's going to fly over, but we don't know, but you know, you know, you got, you're, you have to start somewhere and you have to at least throw the, throw out the opportunity. So 
you know, God bless you for doing that, you know, and, and, and keep it up, you know. What, what, one good thing about it, like you mentioned, you know, it's on, it's, the program is, is if you go to the Knights of Columbus website, yeah, you can see all the videos. There's actually they even a retreat that, that um, you know, like paperwork that you can, uh, um, it, all kinds of materials that you can use and yes. stuff. Yeah, so, there's like a study guide or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Nice. Oh, we'll pray. Yeah, we'll <laughs> gotta go down to the beach and go grab grab all the guys, all the surfer guys off the beach and say, "Come, you yeah. have to come do this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there is something very powerful um, uh, about uh, men's spirituality. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, that's great. So. Thank you for all, all of you for sharing this. You know, just a couple of other things that are going on, um, just some continued updates. Uh, you may have remembered that I shared with you um, uh, a, a couple of initiatives. One, um, I'm looking at a new way to train catechists. <laughs> So, and, and Bob, thank you for helping me uh, review that. I, I had asked a, a, a group of people about eight, 10 um, folks from across the diocese to help me review the Catechetical Institute of Franciscan University. Now, yeah, Franciscan University is outstanding. They would rather cut off their right arm than utter a heresy, you know? And 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 that's the kind of thing that we want, uh, but it, but I, but, so, so what it is, is, um, and let me just share my screen real quick to show you this. Let me just give you a sense of this though. What we're doing now isn't working to the, to the degree that I, to, to what we need, you know? So if, if you go back 10, 15 years ago, when there were more full-time DREs, in the parishes, um, and there were honestly in the office of Religi religious education, the diocesan office, there were four full-time people. <laughs> now it's me and a twenty-hour person, <laughs> you know, Chad, whom I adore. But you know, we can only do so much, and you can only do so much. Things have changed, and not every parish um, has the capacity to form, you know, train all of your catechists. And so we, as you know, you know, have partnered with RCL Benzinger, we've partnered with My Catholic Faith Delivery, you know, beautiful publishing companies out there. But, the, but what I've learned over the years is that when, when we need to make changes to catechist formation, like the basic catechist formation pieces, publishing companies move a little more slowly because they rely on sales. So as an example, for RCL Benzinger, our Echoes of Faith series, when the, when the um, uh, general, in, the Roman Missal changed from we believe to I believe, it took RCL Benzinger two years to change their book, you know, from we believe to I believe. And that's because, you know, it's a publishing company. We get it. We all understand the business model, right? So it takes a while, but you got to build up sales. And a university, on the other hand, can pivot, you know, and, and they're highly motivated to be current, of course. And so uh, Franciscan University has built themselves up to a, to a degree where I'm going to kind of compare, sort of compare them to what Notre Dame, uh, Uni University of Notre Dame does for the McGrath Institute. Um, that it that that it's its fully funded operational institute specifically for you know Catholic issues for Notre Dame and the Catechetical Institute for Franciscan University is specifically for catechetics and that is their stronghold. So um, so I I did a presentation to Bishop Larry. He really liked it. Um, I, I turned to a group, a, a task force who helped me review and just asked them, please, you know, just um, just tell me straight up. Yes, no. <laughs> you know, But it, all of the reviews came back, you know, either agree or strongly agree. 
Uh, I am very, very confident in this program. So let me just let you take a look. So what's happening is uh, Thursday, I'm presenting, no, I'm sorry, January, I'm presenting to the Presbyteral Council. It's only gonna cost every parish and every school $25 a month. And not only do every does every catechist have access to it, everybody in the parish or the school has access to this. I kind of want to charge them. Yes. Is this Franciscan at home? Is it called Franciscan yes. at home? Okay. Yes. I'm almost yes. done with that. Ah, wonderful. Thing. Yeah. Wonderful. So you're well versed in that. I, I guess you like it. <laughs> yeah. Just trying yeah. to finish it. You're right. That's right, awesome. right. So um, let me just show you real quick. I won't spend a whole lot of time on this, but let me just um, pull up. Uh, okay. Can you see my screen? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. All of these months, and I still haven't gotten GoToMeeting. Still haven't figured out how GoToMeeting really works. Um, okay. <clears throat> so here's here it is with the um, and as, as an example, the catechist track. Now we can pretty much, you know, fashion it to our needs. But as you can see here. I mean, here are all of the courses. So they, they'll look familiar. And now no one has to start all over again, okay? So if you, you know, um, if you, you've earned credit for certain classes, they, they won't, you're, you know, they won't be wiped clean, but I would highly encourage um, your catechist to, to just go back and um, more fully engage with uh, this, the, the Catechetical Institute. So, so you can see um, that foundations in scripture, method, philosophy, spirituality, doctrine, you know, but look at all of this other stuff that they have. <laughs> and you have access to all of this on demand. So things like, you know, so if you have a catechist who needs a little bit of um, a, a leg up with methodology of how to introduce scriptures to children or reconciliation. Um, there, there are uh, parenting, you know, ministry of parenting classes here. Uh, even okay, let me just go back um, to others. Let me show you. This one's pretty exciting here. That there's a catechumenal ministry track. So you, know, you can you can really bring along new catechists um, for the catechumenate, and they will have a wonderful formation process. You know, using this institute. Um, there's just, I mean, it's just incredible the 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 number and the 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 depth of the courses um, that are offered through the institute. A Catholic schools track, uh, pastoral accompaniment, and of course they have um, love this one: first proclamation and evangelization, parenting, culture of life. This one is just tremendous. where you can just go in on demand, you know, and, and or invite, you know, how to do adult faith formation and such around these issues um, of pro-life, you know, of abortion politics and, you know, and, and such outreach and counseling. So as you can see, it's just a, a tremendously valuable program for us. Um, so hopefully by January, when I speak to the, when I address the Presbyteral Council, um, your pastors <laughs> will agree that $25 a month, you know, $300 a year is worth it and um, will pay for it. 
Uh, and then uh, and along with this are um, uh, Franciscan University helps to train mentors for those who, you know, want a mentor. And so you're really, really busy. And while you, I know you desire to be the mentor for your catechist, you know, how nice would it be to be able to have the option of us having naming regional um, mentors? So within your parish, you know people who have the 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 love, the spirituality, and they just need to be trained in being a mentor. So Franciscan University comes in and we train the mentors to accompany you know catechists on the journey. So it's it also helps you you know so you you do what you do in terms of supervising your catechists and all of the other um, uh, pastoral and operational pieces that are essential to your ministry. But it's nice to be able to have that option where you have a group of mentors that can help that have been trained well <laughs> to accompany people through their catechetical formation. So um, so we're working on that. I my 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 plan is to have us up and running um, ready in the summertime, you know, in anticipation for next school year because the budgets, you know um have are are an issue right now so i mean it's difficult asking parishes and some parishes are hard pressed even for twenty five dollars a month right now so um so we're looking to begin this um in the summer and then moving forward from there um and then the other final thing that i had to say is um and i've mentioned this before uh, the ministry for miscarriage and people ask why is religious education what's faith formation what are you doing in that area well as our parents speak to us these are the issues that come up and we found over and over again that we the local church here in hawaii lacks we don't lack a pastoral response once our once the pastors know i you know i think that the response is great um but we needed we need a way for parents to speak to other parents and you know for lay people to really help uh, minister to each other in this area and also we needed to ritualize it we have no liturgy um, and frankly as lay people we have no agency when it comes to liturgy so we needed <laughs> we we needed a, a ritual and um, so I approached the Archdiocese of St. Louis, who wrote a ritual for naming the child. Now, in miscarriage, you all you ordinarily do not have a chance to name your child. Something we do sort of uh, automatically as parents, if you if you know you know that you miscarried, you know we we will name our child. But I think that in terms of the liturgy, it's really important to do this in the context of the mass. And so Bishop Larry, God bless him, had said. You know, I really like what I see here. Um, I think I should be the first one to model this. And so March 25, the Feast of the Annunciation will be the first mass over at the Co-Cathedral, sister. Um, and so we'll be, um, come January, we'll be sending out some notices of invitation for mothers, for fathers, for family members who have experienced a miscarriage and come to pray um, with each other and um, we'll have a beautiful certificate that we can enter the name of our children, um, a special blessing, and that we can share with lay people so that we know how to minister to each other. Um, so on Thursday at the Presbyteral Council, I'm presenting this to the, to the clergy. So the neighbor islands, you'll have the liturgy text um, so that um, this mass and the naming um, will be available on every island. Um, and then a final piece is I'm meeting with the, there's a new director for Catholic cemeteries who's coming on board later on this month. And I'm meeting with him to find out how we can um, get options for interment of, of pre-born children. So, um, it, it's uh, it's it's really a, a beautiful ministry that has just blossomed, um, and I thank you, you know, Bob. Again, I keep picking on Bob, you know, for 
um, for assisting me um, um, as we began all of this. Um, this is, I'm sorry, this is the, really the last thing I'm going to say. Um, we had done a retreat, um, and it was an ecumenical retreat, very Hawaiian culture, because we wanted, we think this ministry is for more than um, than those who are Catholic. It's for every person, because this is a this is a a respect life issue, <laughs> really. And so, the um, several nurses were there to help us facilitate, and they are neonatal intensive care nurses, um, pediatric hospice nurses, uh, you know, across the field in obstetrics and gynecology. And I want to let you know that they just had their first international meeting of neonatal intensive care nurses. And this project that we were working on was presented there um, as a way of inviting nurses across around the world um, to be more mindful of what mother patients are experiencing. Um, to try to change the language from product of conception to gestational age. You know, that's, that, that's huge. Just that in and of itself is huge. That, that, that this preborn child is not a mere product of conception. This is a child, a gestational age child. <laughs> so um, so the language, I, I want to let you know that the language is changing in the international neonatal intensive care uh, nursing world. Um, so let's keep praying um, that, that the language will change um, in all aspects um, of our society. So, <laughs> um, Anyway, and so any anything else anyone wants to share before we say goodnight? Karen? I am so excited that you looked into Franciscan and are bringing it on board. Um, when I, I started in person, the catechetical, the foundational catechetical, which is all I'm getting through at this point, um, I can't tell you how many years ago in person because you go once a week or once a year that annual thing and it's it's a lot and then you have to go home and do all this homework and everything and um and then our our uh, parish the parish that i was at was going to kind of pull the plug and so i we were going to go with this one last year i wasn't going to be able to finish i was going to have to just pray that i could do it on my own the following year and i signed up just for like the free floater class and when we got there, he's like, no, 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 we'll be back next year. And I couldn't rally and change all my classes at the last minute. So I thought I was just going to be wasting the years that I put in, the three years that I already put in. And then they came up with this program. And so what I had done in the past was carried on because they keep records. And so every once in a while, I see a little thing pop up in my thing that says equivalency, which means you did it. Nice. Yay. So I did. I went ahead and signed up for... Um, when I left Phoenix uh, t for the mentor program that you're talking about. And it's like $12, $13 a month. And I have Mary Jo, what's her face, who's been there for years and years and years. And um, uh, so, yeah, I got to take her with me when I when I came here. So it's great. Mm -hmm. And th these are Franciscan professors and Franciscan yeah. nuns. And it's they're great. So happy. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I was so dumb because they came to Phoenix to to find mentors, and I wanted to jump on that program, but I left. So now it's here. Nice, nice. And I am really excited about getting local mentors. Um, yes. Culturally, you know, uh, di you know, in, ter in terms of diversity, we've had some wonderful conversations, and they're just, you know, just really top notch. So we're excited. So let's let's put hey. Put a bug in Father Terry's ear because he's at the oh, Presbyterian Council. So it's like, man, we need this. And, you know, <laughs> he, he's like one of the, the 20 percent that can influence the 80 percent. Oh, of yeah. Guy. So <laughs> yeah. I'll tell him. Are you kidding me? He yeah. knows that I'm, we're doing this. Tonight. I'm like, oh, my gosh, Jane's done this great. Yeah, he'll hear about it first thing tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, uh, thank you again, everyone. Um, 
may our Advent season continue to be blessed for you, your families, and all those that we serve. So we pray glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everyone. Carol.